Hello everyone, good morning. Uh, well, at least I'm shooting this video in the morning. Probably won't be out a little later today. Uh, just wanted to give you uh, some updates. I know it's been a while. I plan on doing some more videos, a little bit more on a regular basis uh, to let you know some of the new items going on. But I first wanted to um, let you know about a promo we're doing. Um, so a lot of you know about the, the items we gave away last year. We did all these promos. Um, and what we're doing is, you know, we bagged them up and had them ready to go. So when people asked for them in the comments, we dropped them in their order. So we've got a lot left over and we're just trying to clear them. So, um, and again, in the comments, if you got a $25 order or more, you can ask for one of the promos. Um, we got, we got 38 sets of the Vietnam veterans promo that we did. Had a lot of 3D pieces in there. Uh, Armed Forces promo. Uh, there's 34 sets. Top Gun. Uh, there's 41 sets. The only thing with the Top Gun, it's just the 3D pieces, not the little um, flight stand markers. We're out of those. We had the uh, Black History Rondels uh, for the Black History Month. We have 59 of those. Um, we have one Tiger Tank promo left. Tom Clancy promo, remember that one? We have seven. Uh, Poison promo, seven. Black History Month promo, uh, 17. Uh, I'm gonna have to look that why it's <laughs> down there twice. D-Day promo, we have eight. Had a bunch of the, the funnies in it. I think 10 of them, one of each. Uh, D, uh, say Air Force birthday promo, there's 17. That had all the, um, I believe all the uh, Thunderbird uh, planes that were used. So bicycle promo four, Anzac promo five, and then we had uh, the Star Wars promo, we have 14. So you can ask for them, I, what I will do, and there's no guarantees just because I named these off, uh, you know, like Tiger Tank promo, there's one. You can ask for it, but since I only have one, it's gonna be first come, first serve. So I would probably put down in order in the comments which ones you want. And if I don't have any of the ones you indicate, I will just drop one in there. And I apologize for that. So, but we have plenty. Uh, so what I would do is order in the next couple of days uh, to ensure that you probably get what you want. Um, again, you know, if it's got like a Tiger Take promo and you're like, okay, I'm the first one I know, I'm the first one to order. Um, not necessarily. So I don't want people getting mad uh, here, but these, you know, these are nice little promos. And um, like I said, just put it in the comments and we'll drop it in. So um, 3D, as you can see, historical board gaming just topped 1500 different 3D items now. We've been just blowing and going. We realize that we're doing among a lot of genres, World War One and World War Two, Global War 85. We've got some Cold War 1960s stuff. We have some modern stuff. We have, um, uh, we're getting ready to do Rome um, and amongst other things, a few sci-fi things here and there, but um, a lot of ships, a lot of planes, a lot of tanks, everything you can think of. Uh, we do have, you know, with 3D, um, you know, as you can tell, we've been doing a lot of colors lately. We got a Bulgaria set coming out. I think at three items and a Manchuko set. Uh, should be coming out this next week. Um, you know, I think Manchuko's got like um, five infantry, three militia, I believe, in that one. And it'll be done in a color. And uh, same with, I can't remember if Bulgaria or Hungary. I think it's Bulgaria. I think it's only got three pieces, so. But it will be done in a color. So for people who've been buying them, we appreciate it. And we've been doing, you know, what we can on that. Uh, I think we got some really neat items. I, I don't know if you've seen the latest ones we had of the four uh, commanders for the 
you know, North Africa campaign. We had Rommel, of course, for Germany, and we have Patton for the U.S., and we have Montgomery for the Brits, and then we also have Graziani for the Italians. So those four commanders. We're also um, be putting out some um, command vehicles that they all had um, for people who want, hey, this is the command vehicle for it. So you should start seeing those drop. Um, we're constantly getting people saying, hey, it'd be nice if you did this, that, and other thing. And I, I don't ignore them. I, I've got a list of 3D items. I've got them in columns, <laughs> Cold War and World War One, World War II, um, you know, modern, and we're going down. The priority lately has been Global War 85. Now, don't get me wrong. We're always putting stuff out for World War II, and you've seen it. But um, I've got a gentleman, uh, Chris Atkins, who's the lead designer, and we're just trying to fill some holes so when the game drops, people can buy the pieces they want. Um, we'll get, we've got some more ships coming probably in a couple weeks for Global War 85. We've got uh, more um, infantry coming. Like we just finished up a Russian um, paratrooper for the 80s. Uh, I'm, we're working on the Marines for the 80s. And of course, you know, um, I think we just dropped a Russian ski troop for World War II. And you'll see probably a Finnish one before long. So yeah, we're constantly dropping uh, different ones. So you'll see that. But with 3D, we have made a couple of mistakes. And these mistakes was yours and truly, since I'm the one that does all the reference and research and this is how long I want it and all that good stuff. So if you received an, uh, well, it's not an Ashland, it's, it's a um, Whid, uh, Whidbey Island. Um, if it's a Whidbey Island, it's actually incorrect. So the, the deal is, Someone wanted, a customer of mine wanted an Ashen class LSD. I said, yeah, we can do it. So I, I modeled one, got it ready, you know, got it all put together uh, for my modeler. And then um, last minute, I don't know what I was, I guess I think I was looking for the correct length. Uh, I saw that Ashland was actually a ship in the Whidbey Island class. So I went, oh, I need to change it to Whidbey Island. So I changed it to Whidbey Island, you know, put the length in there, went out, and then the same customer says, hey, I, I don't think that ship's correct. The, the silhouette does not match what I gave you. And I went, what? So I looked, he's right. The Ashland class was World War II. There isn't, you know, that is the Ashland class, but, but currently, there's a Whidbey Island class that has a ship named the Ashland. So when I looked up the second time Ashland for the length, I got the Whidbey Island. So it's like hmm, two millimeters longer than it should be for um, an Ashland. So if you have one that says Whidbey Island on the bottom, it's actually an Ashland and it's slightly too large, um, you know, to scale with the rest of our items that we're doing. Um, it, it works, uh, you know, I've had some people say it's not a problem, uh, so, but if you say, now nah, I want an Ashland, you know, on your next order, just tell us how many you need. And, um, I've got, uh, I had my guys prep me out some extras so I can send them. Um, so yeah, just give me the order number and, um, We'll, we'll look out there and make sure, you know, and, um, you know, we want to take care of the customers. When we mess up, we want to make it right. So, you know, help us, you know, by putting in the comments uh, how many you have and your order number, and we'll get it corrected for you. The other one that I messed up um, was the LST-3. We have two versions. We have an LST-2, which is American-made, um, really cool looking LST, but the three, which is a British made, we have one that had the, um, I think it's the LCT on it and one without the LCT. The one without the LCT, I inadvertently overrode the file. So when someone ordered an LST three without the LCT on it, they got an LST two. Uh, and that was my fault. So we've got it corrected. 
Uh, we've been printing out LST threes with without the LS, uh, LCT in it, so we got it corrected uh, in our files and everything. So again, same thing. If you receive some and it wasn't the correct model, just let me know on you know on the next order, and we'll get them placed uh, dropped in there for you. So. Um, not a problem. We always try to take care of that. That you know, that goes for broken items, uh, a missing item, or anything like that. You know, put it in the comments, and and uh, we'll take care of it. If not, we'll refund you. You know, we don't. Uh, shipping has gotten crazy uh, expensive, and you know, I'm gonna go broke if I ship everything out. So, you know, I apologize, especially for the people that are um, abroad. Uh, shipping is crazy. So, you know, if it's short a piece or something's broken we'll refund you not a problem i do i do refunds every morning i've got a you know some here that i gotta do from yesterday she brings them in the afternoon and uh, i head it out i've i gotta take care of those probably after this video so uh lsts are the 3d so we're gonna be bringing up um real quick global war 1985 everyone's like when's it gonna drop when's it gonna drop I've been going through the map with the designer, Chris, and we've made some changes. We printed out the map for all, and a bunch of guys um, did a YouTube war with the new map. It was like, hey, this is the final map. And we found a few little items that need to be fixed. And then I went through the map and found a few more um, that I, I tend to <laughs> look at things and like, ah, I don't like the way it looks. And uh, I think it works better this way and that, so. There are some changes being made here and there. Beautiful map, uh, you know, I don't think uh, anyone has done the map, you know, like this. It, it's it's beautiful, hats off to our artists um, and um, all the people involved. Uh, Chris, the lead designer in Global War 85 and his crew, um, man, done a great job. Um, seeing some pictures, um, and we are going to try to get that out by the end of the month of this month. So I'm, I'm working feverishly on it, trying to get it done. Uh, the Rome game that Johnny Galvez designed, he had designed it uh, a couple of years ago, and he put it out there, um, showing people that, and he had offer a download, I believe. And I know there's some people that have taken it, his map, and then like, hey, they made their own map, their own colors. So it's still Johnny's map. Um, he's the designer on it, and um, we are producing it for them. They will have 3D pieces. I think there's a hundred and, oh gosh, 120, 120 pieces, uh, maybe 180 3D pieces. And we'll have the information on the website, and, and I'll do a separate video. We also will have a Facebook page, uh, and Johnny will admin it. So if you have questions, and uh, you'll be able to uh, send an email directly to him. And uh, I had asked him if he wants to connect his WhatsApp to it, but he, you know he's checking on that. But we'll have a Roman page, and we'll do a debut on that on another video and get y'all invited for people who want it. We got some really cool sculpts and we'll show all that too. And um, so that's coming out. We have other couple other games that's uh, being uh, revamped. Uh, a new game, uh, Global War, uh, our Global War 2025 Meltdown, of course has been a very, very popular game. Uh, Global War 1939. And then of course with the add on of the Ultra that uh, Kurt Purdy and uh, headed out are headed up to do and um we've got that that's been a real popular game of course our midway game by mike kelly has been very popular so uh we have those available and uh, we'll, like i said we'll give more information on on that as well um what else is there um yeah we've done the promos make sure you take advantage of that uh, we'll get a newsletter out shortly um and on the other games, we do have, we're working on currently um, global, we have some down the road. Uh, we hope to have Global War Modern out by the end of the year. A lot of people say, well, what is that? It's basically Global War 2025 meltdown, but on a bigger map. We, Will and I started Global War 2025 as a full scale 
global war game. And then we decided to make it a, you know, what we call a beer and pretzel game, a lot quicker, you know, can play it under six hours instead of the normal weekend that you play these global war games. And uh, that's what it is. So a lot of people who play it, they want the big game, you know, and they're trying to incorporate rules and the belt down and all that, you know, uh, expansions. And you can do a few, but then it becomes where, you know, you can break the game because it's not made to expand real, you know, real large to get all these different things. Not like the big global games you can expand. And that's the problem with these quick, fast paced games that, you know, that are out there that uh, you can only do a few things. It's like, you know, I was telling someone else they were playing a game and it's limited rounds. And I said, yeah, the problem with that is if you make a mistake in, in, in what you move or something like that, I mean, it's, it's pretty much over. You, you don't have enough recovery time you know, like during the war, World War II, you know, you know, say Hitler, he made he made plenty of mistakes, uh, you know, thinking he was this great general and he could do this and that. And uh, he wasn't. And he made some terrible mistakes, you know, whether he, you know, nixed the ME 262 and I wanted it as a bomber, not as a fighter. And they could have had it out a year earlier or, hey, I want to take Stalingrad because the name and, you know, let's divert instead of going where they, you know, where they should have been going. And they diverted all these troops and they weren't ready and uh, they weren't equipped and they definitely weren't clothed. And so many of them froze to death. They, lo they lost armies there. So, you know, even though there was some mistakes, there was still room like, oh, they could still do this. You know, they could still pull it off. But he made enough of them. <laughs> and, of course, the Allies were as well as overwhelming um, so, and, you know, you can go to Japan, you know, Japan was, you know, they were, they were knocking everyone down, Dutch East Indies, you know, they were in Singapore, they hit, they hit Pearl Harbor, they hit, I mean, they were knocking everything and they expanded so quickly. Their big mistake was, of course, Midway. Uh, you know, they, of course, wanted to land on Midway and take the island, but they had to get rid of our, uh, carrier carrier task force first and uh they didn't do that so they had to turn back uh, great movie by the way i'm talking about the original movie <laughs> from the 70s uh the later the later one uh, it, it misses a lot of things I, I, I didn't really care for it but you know that's probably a sign of my age <laughs> I tend to like the the older ones better but that's that's the i love movies and uh it's just like i watched one the other night uh you know, with Easter, we were watching, uh, you know, the old movie, Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston. Uh, love that movie. Uh, remember growing up. And they got the new one that has, um, I can't remember the guy's name. It played Batman. And it's got Sigourney Weaver in it as one of the Egyptians. And, you know, it's got some really good actors and special effects. Of course, there's Ridley Scott. Phenomenal. Um, but the story was... Mm, not there for me. I was very disappointed. <laughs> Invested two and a half hours, you know, watching it uh, on a on a on a weekend. So, yeah, um, I get here early. Uh, a lot of people realize, don't realize I get up at four thirty. I'm here by about five fifteen. So I get a lot of stuff done in the morning before uh, people come in. And with HBG, you know, I have people. I have Allison who runs my shipping. Does a great job. So I pay people in shipping. I've got pay people in 3D, but we're able to get orders and items out quickly. Some people will call me like, hey, can I do this or that? And don't realize oh, it's already shipped. So, and you know, I stock a lot of items. So a lot of it is, you know, to have, it costs money to stock items and inventory and pay people. Definitely not cheap these days. You know, you're having to pay people more and uh, yeah, there's people that are, you know, it's harder to find people anymore. So, uh, HPG continues to put out, you know, new products, new items, new games, and I think you'll see some really cool ones. Uh, I know a couple of people are invested in some of the new Renegade games that are coming out. Uh, the North Africa and uh, their Arctic G.I. Joe game. And I know a lot of people grew up with the G.I. Joe franchise. I did not. I had a, I had a full one G.I. Joe, you know, the big... Well, I think one six scale GI Joe. Several of my friends had all the cool capsules and all that other stuff. And 
we were, well, I was one of five kids and uh, the oldest of four boys, but uh, we didn't have the money at that time. My dad was a sailor uh, on the submarines and um, he did not make a lot of money, you know, so we didn't get a lot of that cool stuff. But there are there are some neat things coming out. Well, that's why we've been putting out some North Africa items. You'll start seeing it even more in trucks and vehicles. And, uh, it, you know, I think we pretty much have all the aircraft. I think I have one or two to do for North Africa. Uh, we put out some ships that were in North Africa, for, you know, for torch and uh, things like that. So you'll see those. And we also will be launching um, another Facebook page for an Arctic game. We're doing a 2025, um, it's not 2025 Meltdown, but it's based on the 2025 Meltdown engine. Uh, I think you'll you'll like that. Um, we'll, we'll post a couple little pictures. Um, they won't be uh, full full blown of you know still early play. I say early in play testing stage and rules writing and things like that. I have the idea. The concept is there. I've uh, done the preliminary map. Gave it to my artist. To, when I give a preliminary map, I, I skip. You know, take take a map. And then I, you know, draw it up what I want, what I'm thinking the border should be. You know, of course, the, all that can, all that will change. You know, guarantee it'll change in play tests. But you have to start with something. Uh, I, I did all the research. <laughs> okay, let's stop there. I didn't do all the research. I did a lot of the research, made the spreadsheet, and you know, filled in the information. Then I've got you know three other designers: Will, Dominique, and uh, Michael Kessler. They're all working on it with me. And they fill in the information as they find it, and they're throwing pieces on the board and saying, "Hey, what about this?" or "Hey, what about that C zone?" So don't want, definitely don't want to think I'm the only one doing it. But a lot of times, like on a game like this that that I started, um, I love doing the research, and you know, research is tough and it takes a long time. So there was times I come in in the morning, and I'm working on you know who had what where. Uh, I did that with modern. I made this huge spreadsheet of you know, all the items for the, all the different factions. Hey, I think we should have this faction, and this needs to be divided up to this and that. And we, and, you know, you got to start somewhere, and you put it out there, and you start with a map, and then you start changing borders. Well, Will Henson is the lead designer on that, and he'll come back like we need to change this, change that, and then we get the changes, and we go to the next play test, and, and you get different iterations of the map. So with historical board gaming, I mean, I'm all about, you know, historical accuracy. We really do a lot of research. Uh, we try to make it fun uh, for people. We try to make beautiful maps. We get a lot of compliments on our maps. So, but you will see uh, some people who are in the 2025 Meltdown. They like that beer and pretzel style. I think you'll really like the Arctic game that we're working on. It's, um, it'll be good. And we do have, you know, other games down the road that are falling in line. I know Johnny Galvez has got a couple more uh, Rome games uh, based you know, on the same period. He also has, you know, has the Balkan War game that's out. And uh, we'll, we also have a few other ones. But uh, we hope to have Global War Modern by, by uh, the end of the year as well, as well as the Arctic game and some other ones. So we're really working hard on that. Um, next year, um, um, it's going to be tight, but you know, if we can get Global War 1965, which has been shelved, Michael Kessler has been working on that, um, on the side, gathering all the info, and he's got a playtest map, and he's been pushing pieces around, things like that, so he's done a lot of work on that. So, but uh, we also have a Global War 1928, which is an alternate history game. It is finished, um, and um, we'll be getting that out. It's got to go into art and uh, those items. So hopefully by the end of the year, or it should be. Um, we have, what else do we have? Uh, we're, we are revamping our Malta game, a uh, new map. I say new, modified map. And, and rules and all that good stuff. So we, we want to let you know that, you know, some of these are getting a facelift and some of um, other new games coming out. So 
I just wanted to let everyone know on that. So appreciate everyone and uh, appreciate your business. We'll continue to get items out. If you got uh, anything you want for 3D, you know, send us, a, send us a note. We'll put it on the list. It's, sometimes it's very unique. It's like, okay, I think you're going to be the only one that wants this. It's kind of hard to justify to pay a modeler to model it, you know, and then keep it in the inventory and things like that. And I have had some people say, hey, you know, you make this, you know, I'll buy X amount of them. And, you know, you got to buy a lot to pay the modeler. I don't model anymore. When I was drafting, you know, I had a computer, I had modeling software, and I'd model some. And uh, I'm a very basic modeler. Uh, definitely can't do infantry. I've got some really talented guys to do that. But, um, yeah, so a lot of new items, a lot of neat things coming out, and just stay in you stay tuned you know check uh, i hope you subscribe to the youtube you know subscribe to it so you know what's going on subscribe to our newsletter uh, get information sometimes we get promos and discounts and things like that that you're not aware of unless you know um one last item on so many people who order the big global, global war games um I've had several calls. People say, hey, I didn't get my play aids. I just got a map. And we'll say, did you look in the box? And they say, yeah, I looked in the box. I just had one yesterday. And um, I was on the phone with him. And he said, no, all there is is, you know, some plastic down there. So he opened up the other end of the box. And lo and behold, the play aids were in there. So, but we've also had some people like, well, I threw the box away. And so all their play aids got thrown away. So please look in the box. You get the long box. If you ordered pieces, we put them in a little box and put them inside that box for protection. So, you know, don't throw items away. Also, on the, going back to 3D, I hope, you know, if you've ordered in the last week, week and a half, we've started doing, using bubble wrap pockets. So the 3D pieces go in this bubble wrap and get sealed and it puts them and put in the box. Um, we're hoping that uh, keeps the uh, breakage down. And don't get me wrong, it's not like tons and tons of pieces are getting broke, but the problem was is some um, when there's so many pieces, like I have some people order, you know, hundreds of pieces and they get in, put in the box, stuff like that. They rattle around on top of each other. You know, definitely the <laughs> services like the USPS or UPS are not very good uh, sometimes with the handling and they just get, you know, thrown around and it's like, hey, I've got so many X, some of them are broken. So uh, we're hoping to alleviate that issue. Costs a little money for those bubbles, but, you know, for the bubble wrap pockets, but, you know, we're doing everything we can here at HPG to ensure that, you know, you've got quality product delivered to you. So hopefully um, uh, you're liking that. So but anyway, we're just shy of 30 minutes on this video. So I will let you go. And I appreciate it and look for another video in the next few days. Take care. Global War, the ultimate war game. Only at historicalboardgaming.com.